This week on The Wire, national prices up 18.4%. Lockdowns to push up prices and three out of four borrowers get a cut. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. We can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment and more. Kicking it off with our top story for this week, national prices are now up 18.4%. So house prices have risen by an average of 18.4% nationally in the past 12 months, led by a 20.1% increase in regional markets. Now, the lift in national property values is the highest recorded since 2004. The CoreLogic Home Value Index published this week indicates that house prices rose 1.8% in July with Canberra 3%, Brisbane 2.2% and Sydney 2.1% the leading markets. Now in the first seven months of 2021, house prices have risen on average 15.6%, headed by Sydney's 20.9% increase. Now all capital cities except Perth have risen at least 12% in the year to date, as have most of the regional markets. Now most markets have increased by at least 5% in the latest quarter. Sydney 8.7%, Hobart 7.3%, Regional New South Wales, 7%. Regional Tasmania, 6.6%. Canberra, 7.9%. And Brisbane, 6.7%. Have all delivered significant price rises in the past three months. CoreLogic's Tim Lawless says dwelling sales are tracking 40% above the five-year average, while active listings remain 26% below the five-year average. And now time for our next story. Lockdowns to push up prices. So half of respondents to a recent survey believe recent lockdowns will push property prices higher, with 23% indicating that regional property in particular will be boosted. Now the survey by comparison website CanStar polled over a thousand Australians on their biggest financial stresses and investment opinions. Asked by the biggest uh, sorry, asked about the biggest impact lockdowns will have on markets, 23% said a lack of stock will push prices up, while another 23% said regional prices will rise as a result of work from home policies and the desire for less density. Now, only 11% predicted lockdowns will slow market activity. Now, most said property is still the best investment, with 41% nominating houses as the best asset type and 10% for units. Only 18% of respondents said there are better investments in property, while 31% did not know. Also surveyed, uh, sorry, the survey also polled respondents on their biggest financial worries, with 23% citing the rising cost of living. Rising property prices were the fourth biggest concern, nominated by 13% of respondents. Now guys, moving to our final story of the week. Three out of four borrowers get a cut. So almost three quarters of borrowers who ask for a rate cut get one, a new survey has found. See a ratecity.com.au survey of over a thousand mortgage holders found that of those on a variable rate, over half haggled with the bank for a lower rate. And over 73% of those were successful in getting a rate reduction. Now a rate reduction of two point, uh, sorry, 0.25% could save the average mortgage holder $1,200 in interest after one year and 3,656 in three years. And that's based, based on a $500,000 loan with 25 years remaining. Now while most changes to fixed rates in the last two months have been increases, the opposite is happening in the variable rate market. 49 lenders have reduced at least one variable rate in the past two months, while 10 lenders have increased variable rates. Uh, rate City Research Director Sally Tindall says one phone call can potentially save the average variable rate mortgage holder thousands of dollars. She says variable rates are at record low, however most of the deals are reserved for new customers, not existing ones unless you specifically ask. Well guys, they are the top stories happening this week. Now please don't forget to like, comment and share this video and follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week and remember guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot, bye for now.